Hello there, Joe the CRM chap here with a brand new video in my series all f dedicated and focused on the new Microsoft exam MB400. This is the developer's exam uh, for those building solutions on top of Dynamics 365 or the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at our first code focused topic of the series so far. We're going to look at how you can deploy out a JavaScript form function into the system um, and as part of that, um, what I thought might be quite nice is we can actually um, show the process for how you then debug a particular issue with the, with your code and then get that fixed. Because uh, certainly, um, from my point of view, when I was first learning about JavaScript development for Dynamics 365, that was one of the areas which I sort of struggled to understand initially um, to, you know, to get my head around. So generally, form scripts then, um, what are they first of all? So generally, where you cannot f basically on a form do things that you need to do with a business rule so as we saw previously in the series business rules that you sort of set a field it lets you show in high fields change their business requirement you know very sort of simple basic things that you can do at a form level if you've reached the limit of a business rule that's when you start looking at form scripting and you would typically use javascript to build out your form scripts and you can do all sorts of you can do the same things that you can do with a business rule uh, but you've got access to so much more as part of that as well um, so what we're going to want to do today at the moment we've got our model driven app uh, we've got our account entity in there at the moment the business issue or the business requirement that we've got is that we want to modify the display labels of the our composite address controls we've got no way of being able to modify these um, in the system themselves we can't change them by changing the display values of the fields themselves uh, these are all predefined values so what we have to do instead is we have to look at a javascript code file and, and what our javascript will do it will change these to more um, to values that are perhaps more relevant for a particular region or locale. So, you know, in our case, uh, because we, um, I'm from the UK, we wouldn't typically use state or province, for example, to describe that. We'd probably use county instead. And again, zip postal code, zip codes don't really work for us. So again, just postcodes on that. So our, what we're going to do is we're going to have our file, which goes through and basically alters all of that for us one by one. Um, so the code that's going to do that for us, sort of in, so in sort of true Blue Peter fashion, I've already put together all the code. The more eagle-eyed um, watchers may notice down here that this one's ever so slightly different. We've deliberately added in a bit of code that's going to error, so we can then see the process for how that error gets triggered and how we then debug that further in the system itself. Um, so that code is basically ready to go. We want to get that now into our Dynamics 365 instance. So what we do first of all, we go back onto our MB400 solution and we want to add on first of all a new web resource. Now web resource acts as a sort of container, so a developer will be most familiar and you know with them if they've developed previously Dynamic 4, Dynamic CRM uh, or earlier versions of Dynamics 365, they let you do things such as having images or HTML files uploaded into the application. They also act as a mechanism for us to get in our custom code as well. So what we want to do first of all, we want to add in our MB400. Uh, oh, it's already auto-populated it because you can see I've run through this demo once already. Offline, uh, MB400 sample uh, JavaScript. Uh, so we always want to give it a fairly decent and descriptive name and description display value. Under type, we want to select script, JScript. And as we can see straight away, we get a new button that appears on here, which will let us basically enter the function that we saw a few seconds ago. I can also manually upload the file as well. So I've got it saved down on my system as a .js file. You know, I'm more than welcome to upload that. Uh, but for the purpose of the demo today, we're just going to open text editor on here. And we're just going to copy and paste in our code in this window here. So with that done, all we need to do is press OK. At this point, our web resource gets saved into the system. Uh, we get It gets a uh, bespoke URL gets generated for it. So if we wanted to uh, incorporate that as part of a HTML web resource or something else, we can then reference it using this as well. This is now all ready to go, we can just click on publish. And we've now got our JavaScript file existing within our Dynamics 365 system. But at the moment it's not actually going to do anything. What we need to do next is get the um, get it triggered on our on the form or the forms that we want to use it with and then the logic that we've defined will then start to get triggered and pushed through each time uh, the user goes onto the form. So we want to close this down at this particular point. We're going to go into our account entity, navigate across to forms, and we want to edit our main account form. Now at the moment we can't do much in terms of adding on our JavaScript in the new interface. So instead we have to just go to switch to classic at the top up here. 
then all we do is we click form properties up here and straight away we get the events tab loaded and this is the bit that we care about the most. So on here what we can do, we can add on our form libraries or web resources, um, we can have as many as we want down there. And then over here we've got our event handlers. So how Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform works is from a form point of view, you've got various event handlers get triggered as the user does a particular action on the form itself, so whether it's opening the record for the first time, whether it's saving, changing the value of a particular field, all of these are sort of exposed out and we can then piggyback on top of this and add on our own bespoke custom logic. And we've got the ability to, to trigger that based on forms, based on various different tabs down here, or all these different fields on here which are listed on the form. So first of all, what we want to do is we need to get our web resource on the form so we can start to have the function on. So I'll just do a quick search up here and we should get our web resource file on there. And then next I want to go down and we want to add on our, want to make sure that our function triggers every time we load up our form for the first time. So in this case we're just going to click on add. It's already populated the library for us, so that's all, that's all, uh, that's all great. So all we, next step is then just to basically pop in the name of the function. So we don't need to worry about having any brackets or specifying any parameter values or anything. We just put in the name of the function, so in this case change address labels. Um, we want to make sure it's enabled for obvious reasons, otherwise it's not going to do anything. Then this one, this one will probably, more than likely, you'll always need to uh, tick this option now. So if we could have a quick look at the code again now, we can see that in the function we're passing across the execution context. Now this is generally the only supported way moving forward um, that you're going to be able to do things within model-driven apps. All of the various different um, functions and methods and things that you can do while you're at a form level are basically exposed out by the execution context and then what you have to do within your function is then get the specific form context for the record that you're loading and then as you can see from there I can then trigger my specific different um, functions that I want to do such as for example getting a control, changing its label, changing a field value, all of that is exposed out from the form context. So what that effectively means is that we always need to make sure that we're passing it through at our function level, make sure we're using the correct form context uh, and not any deprecated or old um, ways of doing things. And then when we're deploying out our function for the first time in the system, make sure that this box is always ticked. Otherwise, we'll just get errors straight away. Now, if we did have additional parameters that we wanted to specify within our function, this is fully supported. We can have a static comma separated list of these defined on here. Um, you can't have any dynamic values that get filtered through here, unfortunately, so you can't call additional functions to get a dynamic value from the form itself. So if you wanted to have similar logic like that, you would need to process that in your actual function itself and call the appropriate um, methods from within there. Uh, we've not got any custom parameters in this case, so we can just leave that blank. And then finally, um, this might be quite useful if you want to um, you know, have additional checking there to prevent errors from occurring down the road. What you can do is you can tell the function, okay, well, this is the fields that the function relies on to work successfully. Um, so in this case, our address one field is the one that it depends on. So I can just add this on here. Now what will happen is that when people try and go on and delete that particular field, um, they'll just get a warning that they can't because it's got a dependency elsewhere. So that can be quite useful just you know, for preventing any potential accidental deletions or anything like that. Okay, so at this point I press OK. Uh, press OK again. And now what we can do is we can save and publish these changes out and this will now be live in our system. So just click on publish down there. Okay, go back to my model driven app over here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a complete entire refresh of the whole app and I'm going to do this by hitting control F5. This is just to make sure that it always gets the latest changes through from the system. And straight away we can see we've got an error. Um, an intentional error in this case, we can see that the script has errored and, and in this case we get returned the specific error that's occurred, cannot read property set label of null. Um, so that indicates that it can't actually find the particular control, the field that we've specified on there because we've given it a wrong name. We've got the option to download a additional log file if we so choose, which gives us a few more additional details. So straight away I know by looking at this that okay, well, um, apart from the fact that I know that it's our script that's causing it because it's an intentional error, I know that, okay, well, this is the function name, this is one of my function names, that's my JavaScript file there that I've defined, so I know straight away based on that that this is a problem with my JavaScript file and I need to then go in and investigate and fix it a bit further. 
Um, so does, how do you debug that in which case? So at the moment I'm in my, um, I'm in Edge Chromium at the moment. Um, so depending on the exact web browser that you use, the steps will be slightly different. But typically what you would do is you'd have to go into developer tools. Um, so in this case, um, the shortcut for that in um, Chromium Edge would be Control Shift and I. Um, F, it can be F12 in different um, in different sort of uh, web browsers. Um, I'm going to um, open this out into its own window. And so what I want to do at this particular, I've gone into developer tools. I want to actually, okay, let's just say I'm not too sure exactly what's causing the issue. I want to inspect things a little bit further. Uh, maybe, I th maybe I'm you know, in a situation where I'm convinced, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure that field's on the form itself. Um, so, you know, how do I check just to make sure that I'm not, you know, wrong in that sort of assumption? So we do that by sort of breakpointing and then we debug from there. So first of all, we make sure we're on our sources tab. Um, so this again can be different based on your particular browser. I want to just open up our particular um, particular JavaScript file, which is basically there and available. So we can see the whole file, the whole function is loaded in the browser and is, is there for us. And what we can do is debug particular points. So Again, if I'm not too sure, okay, maybe this I'm a bit uncertain. Like I say, I don't know which particular get control is um, causing the error. I can breakpoint each specific one, and then what what that then lets me do is when it then runs the code again, I can then um, inspect and view the detailed information on there just to see if there's a particular problem. So I'm just going to move this onto the other screen for two seconds, and I'm just going to refresh at this point. And straight away we should see that my main screen here is paused. Okay, so because I've got developer tools open, because I've done a particular breakpoint, it's frozen the code at this particular point. Then all I can do over here is just click onto here. I can see that on here I've got my particular um, control down there. Um, I can see um, it's processing through each one. So what I can do is I can just click through each one. Okay, that's not errored in that particular point. I know it's not that one. I can just click on that again if I wanted to so maybe I wanted to just have inspect the particular properties of um, of a um, um, of something that I'm referencing here I can use my watch expressions up here to further inspect that so let's say I want to just okay well can I just check to see if this here exists on the form I can add this onto my watch expressions up here I can see I get returned full details here on there so that tells me straight away that yeah this control exists on the form um, if I was to put something in there that's not valid, so if I was to do something like, uh, oh, let me just make sure I can click the right bit of it. Uh, so let's just delete that, and I'll just put in uh, error instead. I can see I get null on that because it can't cannot find a control that matches that string on the form. So that's how you can work with watch expressions to sort of inspect details on a particular control or particular function. So we'll continue clicking through on this at the moment. Um, no surprises when we get to this one down here. I'm just going to navigate back to the window over here. I'm going to click my um, resume script execution. And we can see at this particular point, this is where we get our error through. An uh, additional thing when we check down here, we can see, okay, well, actually, no. All of these particular fields down here have been renamed okay. It's just this one at the end that hasn't been on been as well. So that could be another way in which you determine, okay, has something worked or not worked. So again, for this particular situation, probably a little bit overkill jumping into um, the debugger, the dev tools to have a look at it. But I did just want to show you that because it is a useful thing for you to know how to do when you're working with JavaScript form functions for the first time. Okay, so I'm gonna close down my developer tools at this point and we just need to the fix this point is just to basically just fix our particular function down here. So all we do is we just replace the um, the control that's been misnamed or had the wrong value in. I don't think, think misnames a word, is it? Anyway, let's not let's not dwell too far on that. Um, and then what I can do is I can go back onto my classic form editor, click on form properties, and actually access the whole of the JavaScript file from within here. I can just double click that copy and paste in my latest code press ok again twice I just want to give it a quick save and a publish just to make sure that all the latest changes are there then I do a control and F5 refresh my model driven app 
and this time we should see no errors should occur it's renamed the field correctly and our code has worked and this will now run and execute every time we reload the form which is really good so that, so that pretty much um, wraps up this video for today hopefully you've seen as part of this the process for how you get a form function deployed out into the application for the first time the general lesson when it comes to writing JavaScript within Dynamics 365 is, as I mentioned at the start, they're really only there for when you've fully exhausted the capabilities that you've got as part of business rules in the applications. You should always, where possible, be using a business rule if you need to achieve very simple or non-complex um, you know, you know, changes to the form behavior based on particular conditions. So you know, if, a field, if you need to show a field based on the value of another field, if you need to change the business requirement of a field based on a condition, business rules are great for that. You should be using that. Where your requirements become a bit more complicated, so for example, working with composite controls, maybe you need to do a web API request into the application, you need to modify or automatically move a business process flow to the next stage, uh, to the next stage sorry. All of that can only be done with a JavaScript form function. So again, evaluate the requirement and align your chosen solution to the best one based on what the platform can offer. That is the best advice I can give you. So I hope this video has been useful. I hope you've been able to see here you know, what's involved as part of JavaScript development, is, uh, development and how to get that sort of um, up and running from a Dynamics 365 and Power Platform point of view. Um, stay tuned for more videos in the series. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. I'd be more than happy to help. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.